everyone. Um, I So this video is going to go over a lot of the things that we would go over on the first day if we were in person. Um, so this is going to have a lot of information that you will need to remember for the rest of the semester. And you are also going to be quizzed on a lot of this information and the other information in this module on the quiz that you are required to take. Um, so I have some notes uh, next to me. So if I pause and I'm reading over those, that's that's why when if I'm pause and not, don't say anything. Um, so please, please take notes as you go through this video because um, I don't want you guys to get upset um, about not remembering this information and especially the first week of classes you're getting a lot of new information from all of your teachers so it's just a good idea for all your classes to take notes uh, on the first day of requirements and things like that um, because with everything being online and you not having um, access to me in person it's uh, it's a lot harder to remember where to find things and uh, and all of that beginning um, class stuff. Um, so uh, the so this module, the before you begin module, um, everything in this module has to be completed no later than Tuesday, January 19th, so that is next Tuesday, at 5 p.m. Um, I am required to drop you from the class if you do not complete this first module, so please, please make sure you uh, do everything in the module. You do have to go through everything in order, and uh, and you will need to get a perfect score on the quiz at the end, um, just because that is um, that important for you to to know all of that information on that quiz. Um, I highly recommend that even though you have until January nineteenth to complete this first module. Um, getting through it in the first couple days of the semester because the faster you can get into the activity, um, the weekly activities, the better it's going to be for you. So right now you have activities one through three and your first exam that are all available to you. So you can start getting ahead and um, all, the first activity is a little bit easier, but then they get harder and harder, and especially activity five is going, you are definitely going to want to, um, a lot more than one week to complete that activity, so please keep that in mind and, uh, and work ahead. Um, and, okay, so... Your weekly quizzes or activity quizzes, sometimes I call them weekly quizzes, sometimes I call them activity quizzes, so those mean the same thing. Um, those close on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Um, so definitely write that down and keep that in your head. Um, if I were you, I would not wait until Tuesday at 5 p.m., um, these are proctored quizzes, so you will need to make sure that you have reliable internet and um, all of the proctorio stuff that you have to get set up um, will need to be done before you take that first quiz, um, and that's a requirement before Canvas will let you move on anyway. Um, but if there are any problems with internet connection or... Um, you your device broke or anything like that that is not going to be an acceptable reason for you to take the quizzes or exams late um, and especially because I will have the activities uh, the modules for each activity open earlier than when you need them uh, when they are technically starting um, there really is no excuse for late quizzes or exams. 
Um, so please keep that in mind. Um, we, you guys are all adults and I definitely expect you to act as adults. Um, so that means planning for, um, emergencies that happen. So losing connection or your device be working too slowly or anything like that. If you are constantly waiting until Tuesday to get your quizzes and exams done, um, it's not going to go very well for you. So I definitely recommend taking those before the last day that they are available. Um, uh, things that you should do. So the first thing, if you have a question about anything having to do with the class or you are taking a practice quiz and you see a picture and you can't tell what it's pointing to, anything like that, um, the first thing you're going to want to do is post in the discussion board um, called Anatomy Hallway. Uh, this is where you can go to see what other students are asking. Um, a lot of times, uh, uh, many students have the same questions or similar questions, um, and it will also be helpful for you to see other people's questions uh, that you didn't even think about. Um, and you also might get a quicker response from one of your classmates if they see your question before I do. Um, um, me, uh, so I will check and also my lab aide Amanda will check. Um, Amanda is a senior lab aide. She's worked with me a lot before and she is amazing. Um, she is also a good person to, to um, ask questions if you ever have them. And she uh, is one of the main people on our Facebook study group. Um, if you haven't joined that, um, Facebook study group already, I definitely recommend doing that. Uh, even if you don't have Facebook, it is worth making a profile just for this semester so you can be on the Facebook group. Um, so uh, Amanda or I will check for accuracy on the on this discussion board. Um, and if you don't see a corrected response from one of us, you can assume that your question was answered accurately. Um, this will also give you a chance to um, teach each other and that is one of the best ways to learn information and anatomy is really hard to learn. Um, you just, I mean, it's, it's time consuming to learn. Um, so the more you do things like that, the more it's going to help you. Um, the second way that you should try to contact me is through Canvas email. So please take note that I said Canvas email. Um, I teach four different subjects. And when you email me through Canvas, it tells me in the subject or next to your name which class and section you're in. So that is very helpful to me when I have tons of emails to answer every single day. Um, so please make sure that you, if you ever do need to email me personally, um, it's through Canvas. Um, and then if for some reason Canvas is down and you need to contact me, um, you can email me through the um, SLCC email, which um, my email uh, and all of the other instructors' emails. Um, can be found on slccanatomy.com under the resources tab and then you go to the lab schedule and instructors and that will show you um, all of the instructors names in blue and that's a link to uh, the email. So just find my name, Joe Stosich, um, and, uh, and that will take you right to my email. Um, you will notice as you go through the modules that there are practice quizzes for you in each module to study for the weekly quiz. Um, the question banks used for the weekly quiz, the weekly activity quiz, um, are the same question banks used for the practice quizzes. So 
the place where you need to be spending most of your time studying is the practice quizzes. Um, each practice quiz will be different, so you'll take it one time, and then the next time you'll get a um, you'll get different quizzes, uh, different questions, and uh, there are a, um, several different pictures for each term, so it's very unlikely that you will see every single possible picture that we have for every single term, but the more often you take the quizzes, the more of those pictures you're going to see. Um, and just to let you know, I did get some, um, some information over the last couple semesters that uh, Canvas, so we have the, the practice quizzes set up to randomly select um, for different terms. And uh, but what Canvas will do is it tends to give you the same terms but different pictures um, the first about 15 attempts. Um, so after 15 attempts, you'll start seeing a lot more new terms. So please keep that in mind as you're going through the practice quizzes because if you get a perfect score in the first five attempts, that's not really a good indication of your knowledge of that material because you have to go through more than 15 in order to see a new set of terms. Um, so just to give you an idea of um, like how to be successful and how, how often or how many of these that you should be doing, um, Obviously, it depends, uh, it varies a little bit between um, like different tables. There might be a table that's really easy for you and so you get that information a little bit faster. Um, but I was noticing last semester, um, m a lot of the students who were consistently getting A's on their weekly quizzes and exams were the students who were taking um, 50 or more attempts on every quiz. So there's, I believe, there's usually four um, practice quizzes for each module, so each activity. Um, sometimes there might be uh, more or less, but it just, it's usually four. Um, and so 50 at least of those every for all four of those quizzes, uh, practice quizzes. Um, and um, you, let's see, sorry, I'm reading through my notes, making sure I'm telling you guys everything, not skipping through. Um, okay, um, for, so you're, uh, you'll have your practice quizzes um, and then the weekly activity quizzes. Um, those will be every week, just like weekly implies. Um, and then every three activities, you'll have an exam. Um, and you can see the, the schedule. Um, I am making the due date on Tuesdays at 5. We do have a little bit of leeway with the due dates, and I wanted to make sure that um, I had a better chance of getting to emails if you guys have questions um, when you're taking your exams or any issues with uh, when you take exams. Um, so uh, I wanted to make those due on a Tuesday uh, instead of over the weekend or near the weekend. Um, sorry, my laptop died while I was um, recording on that first page, so uh, I just, I mean, this is the same picture, I just redid it, so, um, okay, so the, for your practice quizzes, you are going to, uh, your requirement for, in order to take your weekly activity quiz, um, you have to get a perfect score on all of the practice quizzes. Um, when you are taking your practice quizzes, 
you are allowed to have notes and those are not proctored so you can use those however you want my suggestion is that you go through them the first time in a lot of detail as you're going through all of the terms um, uh, all, all of the questions um, looking up the answers as you're going through and then um, the farther into the week you get the less you should be using notes until the very end right before um, or like a day or two before you decide to take your uh, weekly quiz um, you'll want to not use any notes at all and and also time yourself so you are pretending like it's a, an actual quiz like the timed and proctored quiz um, for your quizzes and exams those will be proctored so you will be using proctorio um, that is why in the syllabus it is required for you to have a webcam and um, a device where you can use Proctorio. So please make sure, um, uh, well, you will have to go through in this module the Proctorio stuff, um, how to set it up and all of that. Just please remember if you decide to take a quiz or exam on a different um, and on a different device, you will need to get Proctorio set up on that device. So some people set up Proctorio at the beginning of the semester and they usually use the same device, but then one week they think, oh, I'll just do it at work. But if your work doesn't have Proctorio and um, like, or they won't allow you to get Proctorio on the um, device, you won't be able to use that. And that um, is also not a valid excuse for um, for late quizzes or um, or exams. Um, the reason that I require you to get a perfect score on the practice quizzes is because um, the more you take the practice quizzes, the better you're going to do in this class. Um, the I know at times it's going to be incredibly frustrating because you make one small little mistake and especially when you know that um, if it was a, a, a quiz or exam that I would fix it and give you the point on the practice quizzes I do not go through those you have to get a perfect score without any corrections from me um, and the reason for that is because if you are not able to get a perfect score on these practice quizzes, when you are able to use notes and the PowerPoints and videos and every resource available and you have more time, um, you are not ready to take the quiz. So um, that is why I require that. And I... Um, but uh, just so you know, on the weekly quizzes and the exams, I will go through those and give you points back if, so let's say you change like an E to an I or something like that, that doesn't change the meaning of the word. There are some words, so spelling does matter, but if it's one or two letters off, and it doesn't change the meaning of the word or it doesn't make it too close to another term then I can still give you points for that um, but there are things like when you start learning bones you're gonna see conoid process coronoid process and coracoid process those are all very similarly spelled and one letter off makes it look way too much like the other word but those all have different meanings and they are different um, structures, and you have to know the difference between all of those. That's one of the annoying things about anatomy. It's very nitpicky um, with uh, how you are correct or not. And if you ever get anything incorrect and you don't understand why, please let me know because that is why I'm here um, and I want to help you. So. Obviously, that will be better if you can find those on the practice quizzes rather than the weekly quiz um, and exams, because the practice quizzes, you have 
as many attempts as you want. Um, but the um, the tests and the weekly the weekly quiz and e exams, you only have one attempt. So I can't really do anything when it gets to that point. Um, okay. So remember, as you're going through practice quizzes, if you ever come across any questions or confusion, um, the best thing to do is take a screenshot of that and post it onto the anatomy hallway and either myself or maybe one of your classmates or um, my lab aide Amanda will be able to help you with that. And when you ask questions, that also helps other people in the class, so I really appreciate when you guys do that. Um, okay, sorry, just going through this. Okay, um, another thing, so as far as how to study for this class, um, my very high recommendation is the first day that you're studying. Um, so let's say you're starting on Tuesday. Um, go through the intro video. So all of the instructors and a couple of the senior lab aides that have been working with us for a long time um, made videos for you for each activity. Um, those are also found on slccanatomy.com. Um, you will want to get to know that website very well. It will help you a lot in being successful in this class to get to know that website and where everything is. Um, so those are under the resources tab. Um, and take notes as you're watching through the videos. Um, and that is kind of like the substitute for the intro that I would give you to like if we were in person um, at the beginning of the, um, the class. Um, and then you should start on practice quizzes after you watch those videos. Um, and some people like to, because there are some instructors who bro break down the videos by table. Most instructors do that. And so you can watch one video and then work on that practice quiz um, that has those, um, those terms in it and then go on to the next one and so on. Um, and then as you're taking your first practice quizzes, you should reference the notes that you took from the videos um, there's also PowerPoints on the slccanatomy.com that would be very helpful for you. Um, and then your textbook and anything else that you can think of that is helpful. Um, and if you guys find things that you think are really helpful as you're going through and studying, you should post that on the discussion board for other students to see because everyone is always wanting to know okay, what, what, what can I do to study the best for this class? So, um, so please share if you find something awesome. Um, then as you get closer to the time to take your weekly quiz, um, I mentioned this earlier, but I'm going to say it again because it's important. Um, you should take the practice quizzes with no notes and no references, and you should time yourself. Um, I suggest giving yourself 45 seconds per question. I believe um, I have it set as a minute per question on the um, on the proctored quizzes and exams, but you are nervous on when you're actually taking the exam. So if you give yourself less time when you're studying and you don't have that same pressure, then it's going to be a lot easier for you when you are stressed and it takes a little bit longer for your brain to come up with the answer, um, then you'll have, you'll be set for, um, for success on those quizzes. Um, and then if you can consistently receive perfect scores on every practice quiz, consistently receive perfect scores on every practice quiz for that 
module for that uh, activity, then you're ready to take the weekly activity quiz. Um, okay, I already talked about that. So, um, a lot of students, let's see, um, will complain because they say that there's not enough time to do that many practice quizzes. Just so you know, it might take you a little bit longer the first few practice quizzes that you take, but once you get used to them, they don't take very long. And even when you aren't used to the information yet, it really doesn't take all that long um, after the first few practice quizzes. And so, I mean, every time you have to go in to go to the bathroom, like you have your phone with you anyway, so why not just take out your phone and do a practice quiz every time you have to pee? Or, every, <laughs> I mean, you're just sitting there doing nothing, right? So you might as well do that. Or you're sitting in traffic and you can take out your phone and bring up a practice quiz and get a couple done while you're waiting at a light or like you can find times if you are dedicated to doing so, which you're going to need to be in order to be successful in this class. Um, okay. Um, and the other thing about students complaining about how much time this lab takes, I know it is a lot more time than students are used to having to spend, um, but they're, the students who are successful, I think a lot of you have probably heard that for every credit hour, you should plan on, uh, I think it was two hours of study time outside of class per credit hour. Um, or per, uh, per class hour, sorry, not credit hour, per class hour. And so that means this is a three hour lab. That doesn't even include the, um, the, your lecture class. Um, so a three hour lab would be six hours outside of, so that's nine hours that you should be spending minimum. What I have noticed is that the students who are successful, the minimum requirement of daily studying for lecture and lab is two hours every day. So if there are days where you cannot or do not study, then you have to tack on those two hours somewhere else. Um, and that is minimum. And obviously everyone is a little bit different and requires uh, different amounts of time, but um, that's usually what I have seen. Um, I think I already mentioned this for weekly quizzes and section tests. So the section tests are the ones that are every three activities. Every three activities you have an exam and you can see this uh, the the uh, general schedule on the slccanatomy.com, but just remember that our due dates for my class are Tuesdays at five. Okay, I think on the website it shows Mondays, but uh, they told us that we could um, at, like go a day or two outside of that um, as long as we were consistent. Okay, um, and then Amanda and or I will go through and look at every answer um, on those weekly quizzes and the section tests. Um, and you can also see our grading policy on the slccanatomy.com. Um, okay, some important dates that you are going to want to remember. The last day to drop, so that is when you can get a full refund still, um, that is February 1st. So that goes by pretty quickly. Um, so make sure that you remember that date. February 1st is the last drop date. 
And then the last withdrawal date, so that is you don't get a refund, but you have a, um, a W on your transcript. Um, that is March 20, uh, 23rd. So drop date, February 1st, withdrawal date, March 23rd. So um, the reason I want you to know those is because sometimes things happen and um, you realize that you don't have the time to put into this class that it requires. And so these dates are going to be important for those of you who have things that come up um, or realizations that you have um, because it's much better to take this class a different semester than to not get a very good grade because then you won't get into the programs that you want to get into. Um, you will be required to attend one of my Zoom sessions um, uh, within the first two weeks of, um, of, the, of the semester. Um, so I, I do understand that some of you are not going to be able to make it at the times that I have set for the Zoom session. Um, so for those of you who have uh, scheduling conflicts with the time that I have posted in the syllabus for our Zoom sessions, um, I will need you to post in the discussion board um, that I will title can't make zoom time um, and you need to do that this week so the same day that the the syllabus the online class and syllabus quiz is due um, is when you will need to post in the discussion um, and let me know the the days and times you are available. And if you can please look through to see what other people have posted. And if you have similar times, just comment, oh, I can also do this time. So then I can get the majority of you in the same time. So I'm not having to do like 20 different <laughs> sessions. Um, and, um, I also, I, I can't do that many. Um, I can maybe do like two or three extra ones. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, and okay. Um, last things here, a few, a few last things. So one thing I would like you to keep in mind as we go through this semester um, this is a, a part-time job for instructors. Um, we put a lot more hours in than part-time, um, uh, than what we're paid, but just understand that we cannot be available to you 24 seven. Um, I will do everything that I can to help you and answer all of your questions and answer your emails as quickly as possible. Um, but often there are uh, students who have unreal unrealistic expectations of how quickly teachers need to get back to them. Um, so please just keep that in mind when you email me at like 7 p.m on a weekend night and I don't get right back to you. Um, I answer, I stop answering emails on the weekdays around five or six, uh, and this is answering emails or grading. Um, and then um, I stop at five or six p.m. on Friday, and then I won't start again until Monday morning. Um, so also, keep in mind that when the um, the last day for the quizzes and exams come up, that's when I get the bulk of the emails. So the last day and the day before that. So basically for this class, Mondays and Tuesdays, I get a ton of emails from everyone who has waited until the last minute to um, to do everything. So I 
might not be able to get to your email if you email me on a Monday or Tuesday. Um, usually on Monday, I'm having to play catch up with the students who have emailed me over the weekend. And then Tuesday, I can get to Monday's emails. So just keep that in mind. I, again, I do my best to get to everyone that I possibly can as quickly as I can. Um, but I, I will need you to, um, to keep that in mind and just don't wait until the last minute because then you'll always get your email answered before you have to take your quiz. Um, if you do not receive a response from me after two business days, so that's 48 business hours, um, you should email me again. Um, you will usually receive grades back within one week of the due date. Um, if you take the quiz early though, or test uh, exam, uh, it is more likely that you'll get them back faster. Um, and then, let's see, um, it is possible that you might be asked the same term or even the same exact question on the um, the weekly um, activity quizzes or exams. It's not very common, but it is possible. So don't let that make, uh, mix you up saying, oh, well, I just answered that, but I swear this is that term. So if you think that that is the same term, then you should put that down. Um, your All of your practice quizzes do not close until April 29th. However, you are still required to get the perfect score on each practice quiz before your weekly activity quiz is open. So the reason I leave the practice quizzes open is so you can always have those to go back to and use as study tools. Um, but just know that your weekly qu quiz won't even open or be available to you until you get the perfect scores on all of the practice quizzes for that activity. Um, if you do not take a quiz or test by the due date, you will be allowed to take one at half credit uh, and then you will take a zero for every missed quiz after that first one. So basically I give you one allowance and then you get zeros after that. Um, I understand that things happen and um, uh, last minute things change and some of you have really tight schedules and all of that. So that's why I give you the one exception, um, but the due dates are very set due dates. Um, like I said, I open everything, I make everything available for you early and I do that for a very good reason so you guys can get ahead in your studying. Um, okay, so just so you guys know, I, I understand that this class is time consuming and it's stressful. Um, and I really want to do everything that I can to help you with that. So um, one of the ways that I have noticed students get the most help is by coming to my Zoom sessions. Um, again, I know that that time is not going to work for all of you, um, but there are other instructors sessions that you can attend um, and uh, I have um, I have every confidence in all of the instructors that we have for anatomy and so I assure you that if you end up having to go to someone else's um, you will get benefit from that no matter who you end up going to. Um, now, if you want specific information on that and want to tell me what kind of instructor you like or prefer or like what kind of personality, anything like that, I can, uh, I can direct you in a certain way. Um, but if you, um, the Zoom sessions or some of the instructors do WebEx 
sessions, um, those are like real time. So that is the quickest and best way because if, if we explain something and you don't get it, we can actually see your face through the camera that you're not getting it and explain it a little bit differently or better. Um, it's also helpful to come and hear other people's questions. Um, so please keep that in mind. And the last thing that I want to mention, and I put this in the explanation of, or the um, description, I think, I don't remember what it's called, of the, um, the syllabus quiz, so the online class and syllabus quiz. Um, because I need to be spending my time answering um, questions about quizzes and practice uh, and study materials, um, if I receive emails asking me questions that are answered in this video or anything else on Canvas, and especially in that, um, that quiz at the end of this module, um, so you are required to receive a perfect score on that um, syllabus quiz. Um, it should be called an intro and syllabus quiz, but because um, there's a lot more than just what's on the syllabus. Um, but uh, you are required to receive a perfect score on that. It is very important that you know all of those questions, but if you ever email me, asking me any information that is in this first module, I am going to give you a zero on the Canvas quiz, and then you will be locked out of the, um, the next module until you retake the quiz. You do have, like, I think it's 10 attempts that I gave you, um, and uh, I think it's unlimited time. Um, so you, and especially if you took notes during this video, I believe I answered every single question that is on that syllabus quiz. So if you didn't take notes, you'll probably want to go back to the beginning and take notes. Um, but you, you are going to want to reference that syllabus quiz before you email me. So you don't have that um, annoyance of me giving you a zero because I don't have time to answer the same questions that I already have made this whole video and that quiz to answer all of this um, beginning the class information, okay? Um, and that is just so I can be a more efficient teacher and be available to answer um, the harder questions for you guys, okay? So please let me know if you have any questions about anything. I am always willing to help you with anything that you need. Okay, I am excited to meet all of you and I will see you soon.